heading over to Powilo to my friend Dave Steiner's Javaloha farm. But this is the road. Okay, you gotta check this out. Yeah, this is the main road in. Um, he never quite told me that I re really should have had uh, the Jeep. <laughs> and uh, he never quite told me that this borders on inaccessible. <laughs> Dave is funny. Anyway, you'll meet him in just a bit. Hello, oh, Dave. Well, Jen, this is a, um, a coffee seed that's germinated and is just starting to push out of the ground. And you can see the actual coffee seed there up on the top of that stalk. And it's set its roots down. And what will happen is it will grow up um, maybe about another half an inch before that seed gets kicked off. And there will be two rather um, rounded leaves that come out. It will produce two more sets of those round leaves and then it starts to make the really um, you know, the, the type of leaf, the blade leaf that the coffee tree is known for and it'll have for the rest of its life. It'll drop those four rounded leaves um, well, after about you know, six to ten months it drops those and just the, the blade shaped leaves are what remain. This is a tree that we pruned last year about this time of the year and we took it down to what was about my knee high. So I took it down right about here. And then we allowed all of these suckers to grow up. And we've de-suckered a couple of times. And de-suckering means we snip off the verticals that are growing up off the trunk. And the reason that we want to do that is to thin it out, let more light get in, and that allows more fruit to be uh, produced by the tree if you're going to be able to see this or not. I'll try to open it up, but it, it creates like a cone of branches, vertical oh, yeah. branches, and these become the new tree. And you can see how the, the bark is forming, the woody bark is forming. So to about here grew in the first maybe six, eight months. All of this is new growth since then. So next year wow. it'll probably be about that tall and it will start bearing fruit. How tall? About here go up another foot and a half to two feet. Um, but all of this will be bearing fruit as opposed to when we cut it down, it was just what was growing on that single trunk. Wow. That single trunk was up to a, you know, as tall as other trees in the area. And all the energy was going up vertically and less into the branches and, and uh, fruit. And again, how long does it take to for a tree from seedling to bear fruit? About six years. We tend to plant seedlings when they're about 18 months old, and then from that time it takes another four years. And then you, when you prune them, you prune the single trunk, you allow the suckers to grow up, you snip those suckers down, and, and I will desucker this a couple more times. But you try to desucker it to the point where you only have four new vertical branches coming up on the sides of the tree uh, from the trunk. And those hopefully will be balanced at the cardinal points or, or in some semblance of balance. The light will come down in the center and ripen all the fruit on all four of those new verticals. You don't quadruple your production on that tree, but you weigh more than double it. So it's, it's a healthy way to create more vigor in the tree. Anytime a plant thinks that it's, it's going to get killed, it tries really hard to survive. And so that's what we do. We, we cut it down and and tap our heels and say a little prayer and, and hope that it will send out the signals to grow, grow, grow. And, and like this one did, it does. It, it grows up like gangbusters. So nice, good, healthy growth. Um, it's just time for some flowers and some coffee fruit. Excellent. Let's go look at some that actually have some uh, fruit on them. Right. Most plants that, that bear fruit, bear fruit on the, the newest woody growth. So from about here, to here, you can see the woody growth, or the bark formation, is the newest, and that's where the fruit is. This is all growth from this past year. Next year, this will be all covered in bark, and the branch will extend out another six, eight inches. This was the year before, and you can see we had fruit that we picked off of here. Oh. So Jim, a lot of people ask, well, why do you prune? That's pretty radical to chainsaw down a tree 
all the way to knee high because otherwise we have to pull this tree all the way down to get the fruit that's growing at the top of the tree. But wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have to do that with every single tree and we could just pick coffee right around here. This tree was pruned last year. It's got nice bushy growth. It's gonna produce some, some fruit from here to here next year. Perfect picking height. The energy of the tree doesn't have to go eight, 10 feet up in the air before it can produce fruit. Is there any downside to trimming it? I really can't think of one. In most parts of the world, Coffee trees have been shown to bear fruit for about 50 years, um, or 20, 25 to 50 years, and then they peter out and they just stop regrowing. And in Hawaii, we haven't found that yet. There are trees that are well over 100 years that are still bearing fruit. Let's talk about the trees, the coffee trees right behind you for just a moment. Okay. And um, these obviously have some green uh, cherries on them. Now, the beans, when they're still in the husk, you do call them cherries. Cherries, right. And uh, we refer to that as the fruit. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Um, the, the cherries on these trees, um, and, and almost all coffee in Hawaii, ripens in a particular fashion, and it might depend on your particular geography. But generally speaking, to use a broad brush, my trees ripen from east to west and from the ocean side or the Makai side of the farm to the Malka side or the mountains um, side of the farm. I think that has to do with the amount of sunlight and perhaps the amount of warmth that they get. Um, but that's just I've noticed on, on my farm. Within each tree, they'll ripen, generally speaking, from the inside out. So the last ones to ripen will be these on the end. I think that that's a function purely of age. These were the last ones to blossom and form fruit. Those were the first ones to blossom and form fruit. And do you um, have one fruiting, one um, production per year? Or um, yeah, as yeah. is typical with Hawaii, do you have more than one? Yeah, I have more than one. Um, my harvest runs from mid-January, early February until July. And then I have what I refer to as my echo, and that is September and October. Um, because I think perhaps of global warming, I'm starting to see a shift. We got a lot of rain this past couple of months. Um, and the, uh, the way coffee ripens, from the time that you got an inundation rain to the flower forming and the ripe fruit being picked is about nine months. So we got a bunch of rain in October. We're going to be picking coffee in July and August. Jim, this is a great example of the importance of hand harvesting um, and why we can only harvest by hand on the hamakua. Um, coffee doesn't ripen all at once. This is a ripe coffee cherry. Right beside it, nowhere near ripe. Probably several months from being ready to pick. Um, if I were to use mechanical harvesting, it would have taken all of these green cherries off just to get this one red cherry. That's ridiculous, but that's the way mechanical harvesting uh, has to be done by its very nature. So we pick everything by hand to ensure the best beans are picked and only the right beans are picked.